Well, we got uh, we got audio from uh, Danny Bonaducci's new show. Have you seen this thing yet? No. Bill? Psycho. I hear it's a clusterfuck. Although Anthony's making me sound like him now. No. No, not at all. The, you're just but, a fight animal. I really am not. I really walk away. I really do. This show has potential. A lot of these reality shows, it's 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 getting old, but uh, the celebrity reality shows are really starting to take off, and some of them are really good. The Hulk yeah. Hogan one stinks. Ah, uh, that's awful because it's all fake and staged. The like surreal wrestling. life, surreal life is really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got that new show with uh, the Brady kid there. Yeah, yeah. Off on the surreal Peter life. Brady and his girlfriend. Right. He's like in his 40s, and she's a 20-something. And 20, she was the so next top hot. model or something. 22 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, Ridiculously 22. Hot. And they're, uh, they hooked up, so they decided uh, to make a show out of it. A little anytime, anytime there's a speck of interest in one of these reality shows, like any little highlight, they spin it off and make uh, its, Strange own, love. its own show. Yeah, same thing. That was like, oh, joke. that was entertaining. Now, when you take it in the context of the show, it's entertaining. It doesn't mean it could stand alone, you know, by itself and be entertaining. And it wasn't. That whole th- thing it's like was like when they tried to give the Ropers their own show. Yeah, that did not work. Or Flow <laughs> off of Alice. It's like people barely Flo. watched Alice. Yeah. Then they hook up Flow. <laughs> they go, well, we'll just have you say, kiss my grits Ma'am? every episode. Kiss my grits. <laughs> kiss my grits. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Danny Bonaducci show, I got to tell you, it's it's it has potential. Yeah. Later on in the, in the series, I guess he tries to kill himself. It gets so nut, bad. Man. The show starts with Save him. for the finale. Him and his wife that he cheats on all the time. He's an alcoholic. He does steroids, all this shit. Sex addict is what he says. Every Sex clip addict. I see, he's just Who screaming it? at somebody. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's got like... Just, uh, I'm <laughs> out of my fucking mind. He's got roid rage and all that. And uh, and he's got a kid in the business, so he's uh, driving her to auditions and stuff. He's got but a I guess, kid in the business? Yeah. I guess the show got... What? Really? How old? Uh, I want to say 11, maybe. Isn't that how oh, he got cruel. fucked up? Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. That's is cruel. that that kid that he brought to that... Remember the when we were out in L.A.? When we first started at AAF? Right. And he had a store? baby in a stroller? Oh, wow, yeah. Jesus. When we met him out there, yeah. That time, do march on. <laughs> um, wow. Well, she's now in the business, and he's going to prove that you could be in the business as a child actor and have a normal life. That's ah, one of the angles that the show's taken. Well, the show's getting uh, or got so out of control, they took the kids right out of it. They told the kids, you know, that live with somebody else or we're not continuing with this show. Because mm-hmm. the shit that was going on, they, the, I guess VH1 or whoever filmed it just couldn't do it So it's anymore. pretty real then. It seems pretty yeah, real. Yeah, it's, it's like his whole life is falling apart right on the screen. But I guess he's all right because he'll be on our show very soon. So I guess he survived the whole thing. <laughs> the name is weird though. It's called Breaking Bonaduce. Breaking Bonaduce. It's almost like they're implying like VH1 was leaving the drugs around. Like let's fucking break yeah. this guy. Let's get him. Yeah. I know we can put him over the edge. Yeah. But you know, I, we're in the business. We had Harry Reams in yesterday. He's clean and sober for 16 years. We were yeah. trying. We fake. We fake applause for the guy, but in our minds, we're like, "How can we break him? <laughs> How can we break <laughs> oh, him?" Oh, I saw you do that with Bernie Getz. <laughs> right. Yeah. Same thing. Bernie, we wanted Bernie to snap. You just try to Hope figure out how to break to these people. And uh, Harry Reams, we showed him the first live chick's pussy that he's seen since he was married, <laughs> like 16 years. And he, he went right into guess. character. Oh, he was like, yeah. All of a sudden, he started mumbling under his voice. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Ooh, yeah. Huh. Making noises he hadn't made since he was doing <laughs> porno. Loved it. He's <laughs> he's barely hanging in there. You can see it in his eyes. Just nail scraping. <laughs> yeah. I got to hold on. He's 16 on. years, I'm a successful God, real estate agent. I been here yesterday? Oh, it was key. He was telling great stories. Good he, one. He told a story where he doesn't remember from, I think it was 85 to 89. He swears he just doesn't remember four years of his well, life. Well, that one thing episode he talks about, he was uh, staying in a hotel and uh, or at a hospital rehab. He was trying to go through with some, some kind of rehab. They put him in a hospital here in New York City. Um, they would give him quarters for the telephone every day. Well, he would stock away these quarters, and then when he had enough, he went out and bought some booze with it. Uh, he got hammered, just bought, bought like a half a gallon of vodka, drinks that down. He wakes up four days later in the Los Angeles County Jail, 3,000 wow. miles away in jail, still to this day has no clue how he got from New York to L.A. and ended up in jail. How do you go that far Hey, you can't be that fucked up and get on a plane. Yeah, on a plane, driving, yeah. hitching. You have to function. You have to be able to move locomotion. <laughs> <laughs> but that is fucked up. That is hammered. 
That really is. <laughs> oh, oh Mari. Yes. <laughs> Jesus, Mari. Six months pregnant. You were six months pregnant when you were shot. What happened to your baby? She's doing fine. She's doing fine. All right. Yeah. Thank God. This is the one uh, that was shot point shot blank in the, in the face. face. Shot oh. in the face with a yeah. shotgun Somehow by her. She's got a pelican chin. How much do you Pelican her. <laughs> oh, you are the worst. Oh, well, you got to make the you got to paint the pictures for the uh, the oh, audience, eh? Pelican. If I never got to hell, oh. it was fast as that day. Oh, my God. Crap. Wow. Um, Shark attack. Right out and die. Oh. There's a person who saved your life, wasn't there? This shooting happened like one, two, No, I nursed myself back to you fucking hell. Her tongue is brutal. You know, her tongue is hanging out of her mouth. Door. It's, yes. it's not bad enough. They're and doing a dramatization of her being a shot in the face. Yeah. You see that with the black and white? <laughs> yeah. And it's Reverend like a bulldog. You ever see a bulldog with his tongue just won't go in? Yeah, yeah. It's all dried out. That's a mastiff. And there are lots of That's pieces of this puzzle that we want to just Sounds like Ben on Mike. put together so we have an entire puzzle <laughs> all done when it's over. And the and the first big piece we got to bring out is it's your daughter. Your right? chin. Oh, oh more. Oh, here more she is. Is. Yeah. Hello, you. Listen to Mari. Look at you. <laughs> Hi, Mohanas. Oh, Mohanas. Mohanas, who is that? My grandma. <laughs> that your, who's that? Grandma. Is that your grandma? Who's Jesus. that? She's 25. <laughs> Grandma's 25 years old. <laughs> Holy crap. Are you kidding me? Who helped save your mom's life? That's great, great grandma. <laughs> her prom's tonight. <laughs> that is horrific. Tonight is her 30th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, jeez. All right. So, uh, mess. Breaking Bonaduce. You want to hear some audio from this thing? Sure. It's pretty good. Danny had an affair not too long ago, and I've been trying to deal with the damage of that. Looking back on it now, I should have seen it happening, but, you know, at the time, I really didn't realize that it was happening. I actually told you it was happening. No, you didn't. I gave you a pretty clear heads up. Okay. Do you remember this conversation? Honey, I know you don't like sex. Somebody better start having some sex with me soon. So the reason that you had the affair was because you weren't having sex. You know I what? Think you've got when it, this it affair, wait, I have to get this in because it's, I think, really relevant. When he was having the affair, he was getting the relationship that he deserved. No, we were not having sex because he was having sex somewhere else. He wasn't getting any sex from me, and why should he have? Having I mean, that affair meant when you were withholding sex from him that he was... That well, this woman had no mercy for me and my children, none. You just see these letters that she's written him. They're all like, oh, you're my husband, and, you know, like, me and the kids didn't even exist. Kristen, i got to tell you, I mean, that freaks me out. It freaks me out. That's so, like, over the edge. I, mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand... How that happens? Where? How did that happen? I don't care about sex that much. I mean, I don't. I just feel like I'm more evolved and I have better things to do. He is a sex addict, <sighs> totally. Do you think you're a sex addict? Yeah. Holy crap. So what the wife ain't giving him sex, but he's getting it somewhere else, and that's why the wife says she wasn't giving him sex. She's uh, not in, she openly admits she's not interested in sex. What do you do in that situation? I think I'm a higher evolved person. Yeah. What does that mean? We all need sex. My God, man. Uh, Watson <laughs> from Allentown. I just saw the black Jay Leno on Maury. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> so she's pissed off that he's having an affair, but she's not giving it to him. What happened first, though? Did she stop giving him sex, and that's what caused him to go she out? She said she doesn't like having sex. Hmm. I gotta side with Danny on this one. Yeah. Point to uh, Danny. Yeah. Point yeah. to Danny. One point to Danny. All right. My career is my thing. I'll work day and night for it. I'll do anything for it. And I do that for my family. Like I said, I used to live right behind Grauman's Chinese by the dumpster, and uh, I won't have that happen again. And I've talked about us being in counseling for for a very long time now on the radio, but I never specifically talked about an affair. And I thought, here's an act of contrition. Gretchen will understand. I'm going to put my career on the line right now. Hello? Honey, I'm going to have to turn down your radio. Yeah? Apparently you've been what a great guy. He's going to tell her live on his radio live show. Live on the show. That he's having a, an affair. Holy crap. He did that? The, the guy's just yeah. desperate for fame. He really is. Yeah? Apparently you've been listening. Yep. Sorry. I know this is an inappropriate time, but 
I didn't know. Well, how are you? Uh, I'm I'm not good. You know, I mean, I never thought that I'd be in the situation in the first place. And secondly, I never thought that I would stand for it, you know. But once you have kids, you can't be selfish, you know. Sometimes you have to put them first. And, you know, that's what I did. What a wonderful guy. Yeah. Do it do it on the air. Do it on the air and try to fit it in before you have to play your commercials. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. So he told his, uh, yeah, his wife that. He was having an affair live on his uh, radio show. Mm. What do you think of that, Bill? Sort of a uh, break of the trust between the... <laughs> you think? Just yeah. a bit. I mean, I mean, is she in on it, though? I don't you never know what this Hollywood Could crap. be an act, right? That's what yeah. I'm thinking, too. I'm thinking, oh, well, she's crying. And then I'm thinking, of course she's crying. Yeah, they can Probably an open relationship. She was in yeah. on the threesome. Let's go to... <laughs> right. Let's go to Kung Fu from yeah, White Bag. Weeping on the phone. Actress. All right. Your voice is quiet. No, I haven't had sex in over four and a half years. Five years in December. No surprise with a name like Kung Fu. Hey, no, Kung no, 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 no. Hey, Kung Fu. Hey, Kung Fu. Bang that's me just harder. His, that's, just, just, that's just his street name. What's the problem? Yeah, why <laughs> haven't you had sex in four years, nine months, Kung Fu? Women or whores? Well, that I, doesn't make well, sense. Well, no, no, no. My ex would fuck the world is what it came down to. And I don't want diseases, the emotional baggage, all that other crap. I've never felt so free in my life. But but what about the sex? I have it every day, sometimes three times. With your cat? Yes. With myself. That's better Not, than a woman. So you're just a self-sustained is, unit right now. <laughs> masturbation is the key to freedom. Will you ever have sex again? Yeah, I'm working on a 21-year-old right now, but, you know, she's a slut, and her cousin's trying to hook me up with her, so he has a it might work out. I don't know. My friends women. think I'm gay. I'm not gay. Shaggy, I'm not a queer. That's all i got to say. <laughs> Jesus. Shaggy, Shaggy and Kung Fu. You guys have been dating for five years. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No one was even going in that direction. I know. Going in like, yeah, I'm not gay. I think you're, you know little, I think you're a little worried about that Kung yeah. fu -y. Well, yeah, all 1K plan, and I'm not care. gay. <laughs> right. How do you get the name Kung Fu? -y? It's my first gamer tag I ever had, like years ago, so I stuck with it. But why? Did you, did you kick somebody in the head? What? No, 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 no. Uh, mm. Just it just came to my mind when I was hooking up DSL about ten years ago, and that's about it. All right. Oh, no good. Nothing exciting. Oh, Later. Jesus Christ, Maury! Thank you, Kung Fu. -y. He, oh uh, my God! Don't even look. <laughs> Burned. Man to the law. Shot. And run over. It's like a sleet stack. <laughs> Remember that shit? <laughs> how brave you are. You know how courageous you are. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we all fell in love. Yeah, yeah. That, that was it. And oh, my God. It's an update. Uh, it's an update. Sleet stacks. All right. Uh, let's move on with the uh, breaking bond. Oh, they gave her a plastic nose. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's nice. They'll snap on nose. From the, from the Michael Jackson nose. collection. <laughs> Those snap on noses look really uh, real. The slee stack. Wow. Remember that? Jesus. All right, here we go. More Breaking Bonaducci. Oh. Do you have kids? you have kids? We have two children. We have two. What are you teaching them? You know what? I noticed even with my daughter. This is why you're in therapy. It's because of those kids. You're just squinting your eyes at me. What do your eyes want to say? That it would be, I would, I would walk a very careful line with my children. You're telling me to watch my step? Yes, I am. All right. I'm going to watch my step. Thank but you. I'm going to tell you the same thing back. I want you to watch your step with your children. Because if there's one thing that's sacred to me, it's how parents treat their children and what they teach their children by modeling and their behavior. You can bang out all the cliches you wish if it'll make my wife feel better. Cross the line with my children and we'll have difficulties. Okay. Oh, what? man. You don't want to mess with this guy. Crossing what line? What did he do? He's talking about his children. That's yeah. all. Talking. Talking about isn't his he, children. Isn't this a therapy session? He's, yeah. He's that's on, he's that, that's not a real nice. therapist. The no. second you go on fucking TV, that's like You're Dr. Phil. Yeah, right, right. You're like me. you got the same problem. Mm. You, you know, he's trying to get laid. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to be in show business. Yeah. That's it. It's a scam. All right, more he's damage. very unlikable. Oh, I'm guessing that you get by now. I'm not my biggest fan. Do you get that by now? Yes. Okay, good. And you know what else I'm guessing? I'm guessing that you really are a good father. And I want you to Thank tell you. me how you're a good father. That's what I can't get. That's because what I want to know. You know how tell I'm a good father? Like I teach home. them not to be like me. Are you happy? I teach them the lying's bad. I teach them the cheating's bad. I teach them all the things I don't know. I didn't do a thing. 
I did not do a lot right. I'm 45 years old. And I didn't do a lot right. Oh, boy. And it's not that my kids are off limits. I just taught them to be better than I. They know better in a way because I've been deceitful. I don't tell them I know this from experience. I don't tell them I know this because I am soulless. It's acting. Yeah, he's not a very good actor at all. He's an addict. Yeah. They will be better than I for not knowing me. Dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, come on. I can't stand addicts. They fucking make everything about themselves. Like, you're actually feeling bad. I'm, I'm a piece of shit. And they wait. No, no, you're not a piece of shit. <laughs> you're, you're, no, I am. I am. Fuck you. You are a piece of shit. You're exactly right. And you get no sympathy. <laughs> I, love, I love that. Very uh, unlikable. What's great about these celebrity reality shows, they'll do just about anything to keep their fame going. So yep. these shows are going to just get better and better and better. And now, the, yeah, you've got to top this guy now. Yeah, you've got to top this guy. You the know? guy's n- known for what he did when he was 11, 12, 13 years old. And now he's 45 and trying to uh, rekindle things. I mean, of I like him. I think he's funny. I saw him on Politically Incorrect one time and they had, like, all child stars. Really? And he was the only guy who was, like, really being open Honest, like, yeah, it sucks. Bring, I wish I never did the show, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then, like, Gary Coleman's trying to play it off. Like, when people are going, like, you know, saying, what you talking about, uh, Willis? Yeah. He tries to, you know, thinks if he ignores it, people are going to forget that he's on that fucking sitcom that's still airing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, just give into it. Go to the mall, make an appearance, sign some headshots. Yeah, what what is it about this uh, being a, a, a star when you're a child that just fucks him up so bad? Because uh, that's all they're known for. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want people to think about you as being twelve your whole life. Just imagine <laughs> what you were doing at twelve, and that's all they know. Other people are able to move on. Yeah, right. but when you're famous, it's like if if you fuck up your life, okay, and you're anonymous, the only thing you got to worry about is some guy you went to high school with, <laughs> maybe walking in when you're flipping burgers at TGI Fridays. But if you're famous, everybody went to high school with you. Just yeah, like, who the right, fuck right. He, He's making burgers! <laughs> what a loser! Oh my god! And then they're on their cell phone. Dude! You remember that? Was it one day at a time, right? Remember the guy who played the janitor? Dude, he's making me a burger right fucking now. Uh, Steve, uh, no, Schneider! <laughs> fucking Schneider! <laughs> This is a fucking, I mean, every fucking right. day, and you just, you, what do you do? Oh, wow. You just can't leave it. It's, it's fucking right. horrendous. Your life freezes at a certain age, and that's it. And everybody. If you were in a sitcom, oh. that's it. I, I, you know, I had. The that is brutal when you put it that way yeah. there, Bill. <laughs> that's why they, they shave their head, they get tattoos, they try to do everything. Yeah, right, to right. look fucking, completely different. And when you got that courtship of Eddie Father's face where you're 60 and you still look like you're eight running down a beach, you're <laughs> fucked. You try to be edgy and be a peep, but let yeah. me tell you about. They always uh, start up like a punk band. Yeah, they they, they get do piercings. Yeah, they do heroin. <laughs> they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> no, no. They got to get they totally on Alice. opposite end of the spectrum. Alice. Oh God, did that kid look horrendous? He turned. <laughs> he got yeah, older. Yeah. yeah. Oh, his head just kept getting long. longer and longer. <laughs> that John Kerry. T- Disease with Tom Petty teeth. <laughs> he probably got more ass when he was 13 than when he was 17. Yeah, oh, that's great. Well, we used to, you know, hang with Barry Williams. Did the show a lot. He would get so pissed if you called him Greg Brady. He's just had it. Oh. Absolutely had it with that, you know. And we yeah. would hang after the show wherever he went. He was still Greg Brady. What was that show where they pushed him into the pool? It was just the oh, final um, nail. Surreal Life? Was it on Surreal Life or one of those? Yeah, and he just gave into it. He was just like, yeah. I think he, at that moment, he's like, well. Well, Greg Brady there, uh, Barry Williams did the, the celebrity boxing. Celebrity boxing. Didn't yeah. he fight Danny Bonaduce? Yeah. He got hammered. He got his he? ass kicked. <laughs> Danny's like a martial arts guy. And what Barry Williams, what does he know about fighting? <laughs> My lawyer was one of the guys in... Uh, what is that? F- uh, the Goonies. Oh, wait, that's your lawyer too? <laughs> Chunk? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, who the hell was talking about that? I don't know. I don't remember this He's one. He's fucking great. You know what I love was about it B- Bob? Bob? Yeah. Yeah. 
Bob Kelly? Kelly? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what Same I love guy. about that shit is like he he just fucking walked away. He actually went to law school. Took yeah, this wow. shit, did all that. Now he's out. He's out. He's a yeah. lawyer. He's fucking great at it. He's got pictures in his office of him as Well, I've chunk. never seen the movie, so it doesn't freak me <laughs> never out. Never saw the movie? Yeah, my girl was just like, dude, that's chunk. Because <laughs> I guess he... Dude, that's chunk. That's chunk. Do you know who's representing <laughs> you? Chunk. All right, we got more audio from Breaking Bonaducci. Do, do you know what all my friends would call going to Las Vegas without your wife? That's a hall pass. Nobody takes their own wife to Vegas. I'm begging you to come to Vegas. You should be flattered. See what I mean? I just would be a grateful and much more comfortable if you would come with me. I just don't feel like I need to be babysitting you. Good answer. I'm afraid I, I won't she deliver. I'm, fr I'm afraid. This marriage is He's so scared. over. What are you guys doing? One no, of them, I respect that. Fuck you. I have to go with I mean. you so you don't cheat on me? Yeah. If it's real, one of them will be dead in a week. If one of them will kill the other one. The marriage is so over, though. I mean, what, are they staying together for the kid or the kids? That was a good soundtrack, though. Yeah, the it's dramatic sad music. music, right? Yeah, so he's, he had to do a gig in Vegas. He, want, he wanted his wife to go with him because he thought he was going to cheat, and she said, fuck you. No. Cue the haunting guitar music. That's right. Now you're going to go to Las Vegas, and we're thinking that she's not going to go with you. What do you think is going to happen? I think this such a giant mistake. Tell me about that. It's well, fake. In four days, I will not have had a drink in six months. I know, I'm sure you're all aware, but I take a pill called Anabuse. What that does essentially is turn alcohol to formaldehyde on contact. If you took one in the same day as drinking, you'll definitely go to the ER. You could die. I switched them with aspirin three weeks ago. I haven't taken Anabuse in three weeks. We're taking uh, bare aspirin. So not only can I drink, I most likely won't get a headache. What the hell is that? Who's he trying to trick himself? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That he switched them. it with the aspirin? Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> this, this whole angle, I don't get. Right, he's tricking himself. It's like, well, then why don't you or stop doing? Or does she doing? dish out the, the pills to him? I'm completely aware of how fucked up I'm. Right. I am. Everything that I'm doing. So let's stop doing. What it. the hell is that? What is that know? about? Are you setting yourself up for a drink? Because this is the deal breaker in your relationship. The way you're kind of flirting with danger. If you get busted with your pants down somewhere other than home again, that you know we got a deal breaker. Set There's part of me that says I can do this. I can go to Las Vegas, do my job, and come home to my family. What is he doing? And there's another part that says, well, if you confess your dishonesty, you're being honest, therefore hypocritical. Oh, no, here's the deal. That's what's given you permission your whole life with her. He's been drunk. It hasn't been him. It's been the alcohol. So now it looks like you're sober. If you slept with somebody, man, she's out of there, unless she found out that you switched three weeks ago. How freaking clever is that, Danny? Pretty clever. That's really clever. And really shitty. Yeah. Well, we have a big uh, a big star on the hotline we have to get yep. to. Danny Bonaducci. You know okay. Danny, right? Are you watching the show? Not right now. Why not? Because you say not to listen to it when you're talking. Oh, oh no, no, not no. this show. I mean, show. are you watching oh. Danny Bonaducci? No. Why not? Because. All right, hold on. We'll get to you. <sighs> Please hold. You're still naked, though, right? Yes. Great. All right, hold on. We'll get to you in a minute there. <laughs> Let's say hi to Danny Bonaducci. Danny. Danny, what's up, man? How are hey. you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Great. Although, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm the tiniest bit surprised. Why is that? Well, because you guys are like, you know, legends in my business. I'm a yeah, morning jock, as you know. And you guys are like probably a, one of the biggest names in radio. And I'm listening, and I'm hearing about how dangerous the dashboard of a car is. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me jump in with my life. So one day, I'm sleeping with Johnny Thunder's wife. My girlfriend comes home and shoots me in the chest. Now, that's the night out. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We, we live the pussy lifestyle, man. Compared to what the hell you've been doing, we are just faggots. He lives a behind the music episode every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. And I'm sitting here. The dashboards were very dangerous. I was almost injured once in a, a sh short stop. <laughs> what an ass. And I swear to God, if, if it wasn't for me and maybe Susan Day being a puker, they'd have had nothing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one, the Partridge family behind the music. Yeah, they tried to make Susan Day seem like uh, she really had bulimia bad, I guess. Yeah, but before they named it, like she's the, the poster child of this stuff, because she's way back when it was called Throwing Up. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that was kind of back when that was the look anyway. Exactly. 
Everyone yeah, loved a nice skinny broad back then. Everyone was trying to look like Karen Carpenter back then. Yeah, Karen Carpenter, that was a little too far. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Danny, uh, we're loving the show. I, I I don't know what to think of it, though, man. You're crazy. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, going concern these days. My, on, my only concern with that, because, I mean, I can't say they edited me crazy. What I Because that, that's the way I am. That's how I behave. There's no way out. What I can say is I was really, really, really crazy on Monday, and then really, really crazy on Friday, and when they're done editing, I'm crazy all day. The <laughs> entire <Monday>. week. <laughs> <laughs> that's reality yeah. television for you. <laughs> yeah, you probably had a couple of nice, normal days in there, right? I did nice days with the kids. I like my pets. I was going to say I mowed the lawn, but I didn't mow the lawn. Were you ever in the middle of losing your shit and you're just thinking, okay, this is making the show? Yes. To be honest, uh, to be honest with you, I was, but that was kind of the problem where I started to think of this is really crazy, that there might be something seriously wrong with me. Yeah. Because I'd be going so far, and in my head, I'm thinking, wow, this is probably going to be really interesting, but then it would go so far in my head, I would think, hey, you have to stop this, and, <laughs> and I couldn't. People are going to be watching this, for God's sake. You know what? I'm kind of bummed because uh, we have you on live, so obviously you're okay by the end of this, the, the show. Well, I was watching every week convinced that, you know, we were going to get the headline. You know what, man? I swear to God, <laughs> so was I. I took so well. I. I, I, I don't know if they'll air this or not. Yeah. Uh, because we had some legal issues, right? Not not everything went according to plan. And, you know, I was chock full of Vicodin and vodka and steroids. Not a great mix. You know, especially if I got a questionable anger management problem to begin with. So there's some people that might be suing. But anyway... <laughs> Um, there's a game I invented when I was homeless, and it's called Shoot, Bitch. And what you do is you find the guy with the gun who thinks he's really bad, and you piss him off, and he draws his gun, and you look at him and you go, Shoot, Bitch! And then they never do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's a little suicidal. I, no, that's not. Cause I no? I truly believe they won't do it. I, it, it would be suicidal if I thought, man, if I say this, this guy is going to shoot me. But, you know, the public places and stuff, uh, they're never going to shoot. Wow. Yeah. What, now, what? It, obviously, it was the drugs that uh, got you homeless. You're spending money on drugs instead of uh, the roof over the head. You mean, you mean back when I was homeless when I was, like, 19? Yeah. No, everybody thinks I was, like, this big crack whore, and that came later. Um, <laughs> the Partridge, uh, Partridge family, the last year, the big money, yeah. $600 a week. 600 bucks a week. Yeah, it was wasn't really bad money for 1975 or whatever it was. No. But when I turned 18 to get all this money, it was 72 grand. And I made a conscious decision. I said to myself, well, I can either try and eke this out into some kind of lifestyle for a little while, or I can have the most outrageous 30 days ever. <laughs> That's what I went with. <laughs> God damn. Oh, we're talking man. to another rock star. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> we, we bitch about how our rock stars are gone, man, but you, this is your rock star. Well, yeah, thank you, man. I, I, I mean, I'm 46 years old, so I feel like, you know, Janis Joplin is one of my heroes, yeah. right? Dead at 27. Now, Britney Spears is going to live forever. <laughs> That's just so inappropriate. What happened to rock stars dying, choking on their own vomit like they're supposed to? Hallelujah, brother. We were just talking about, uh, we were at... Uh, Fest a couple years back, and all these tough-looking bands were eating like vegetarian meals and drinking water and oh, and whining and complaining, and they're as they're all tatted up. And I was looking like, man, I've been backstage for many, many years. I'm like, what happened to the rock star? Where's the waking up with the needle in your arm, clinically dead? Right. <laughs> all that shit. I want you to know that's the line to beat on behind the music. Yeah. Nikki Six saying, and that's when I woke up with the needle still in my arm. Yeah. With the blood. <laughs> the line to beat, man. Yeah. Yeah, and people are not really trying to beat that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Although Danny's coming close. Danny's going to give it a shot. try. He's going to give doing, it a shot. So that's really you doing steroids on the show? Yeah. First, uh, first episode, I didn't know what, I'll tell you guys the absolute truth. Here's what happened. We saw VH1 one show, a very cute little show called Rock and Roll Dinner Party, and I got the idea because it said Mick Jagger drove up to a nightclub, and I thought... Who the hell taught Mick Jagger to drive? 
<laughs> I never thought about the Jagger behind the wheel of a car. Have right. you? He goes in limousines and those voices. I wonder what else he does. I wonder if I had him over to my house, would he play Pictionary? You know, what do these rock stars do? So we, we sold them this cute little show. And then that kind of, they didn't like that so much, but they thought the Bonaduce's were interesting. So my wife started setting up these cute little things for her to do, like her 39th and a half birthday party because she was never going to turn 40, stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. And I said, just send the cameras to my house and I'll be fascinating, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so they send the cameras to my house. And I'm just sitting there like a retard doing nothing. So I said, excuse me for a minute. And I went to my local bar and I started drinking, thinking, oh, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And by the time I realized I had no ideas, I was wasted. <laughs> and I go back to my house and I'm literally stumbling through the door. And the second they see that their subject of their show is just geezed, they light up all the cameras. Oh, they must have been fucking happy, <laughs> man. Oh, it's like God, they gold. Been Half a second before, like, dude, we're getting canceled. And yeah. Then all of a sudden, and he's, then, he's, oh. he's like when Urkel showed up on Family Matters. Like, thank God. Here we go. Opens the door. There's a shining aura yeah. behind him. I'm not done. My point is fascinating. So I go, you guys, you guys, you want to see something really cool? So we go up to my gym, and I take off my shirt, and I think they think I'm just being this total narcissist because I'm in pretty good shape at this point, and I'm just standing there shirtless. And I reach into this fishing tackle box, and I pull out a needle. I mean, they're huge, these needles, because uh, steroids are oil-based, so they release slowly. So there's essentially the consistency of motor oil. So the needle has got to be gigantic. <laughs> so it's not like you're taking a needle. It's like you're wounding yourself. <laughs> So I go, you guys, you guys, want to see something cool? Watch this. Pow! Right through my shoulder. And I had done it before, but I was showing off, and I hit the bone. Oh, God damn. That's exactly right. I go, oh, my God. And I let go of the needle, which is now sticking out of my shoulder. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then finally, I shoot the stuff in, and I pull it out, and there's just blood everywhere. <laughs> Holy because crap. It, and it's dripping down my arm. I've got a needle. In my hand, and I don't know. I promise you, the director is the sweetest man in the world and had my best interests at heart. But somebody had to be going, Oh my god, this is good. Gold, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> fact that they name it Breaking Bonaducci, I don't think they're rooting for your health. Yeah, I, I, I named it Breaking Bonaducci. Oh, my rehab. fault, my fault. Yeah, I, rehab and I, call, I called them up because you get a 10 minute phone call every day. And I called them up and I said, You got to change the title to Breaking Bonaducci. It'll, it'll give people an idea of what they're in for. You know, uh, it's just not fair to have being Bonaducci. Yeah, people think they're going to watch it, you know, with a Peter Brady show. You know, it's Peter Brady with <laughs> yeah. a bike through his head. D Danny, this is obviously <laughs> one, one of these uh, very stereotypical child star things. What? Where did the anger come from? You know what? I'm not that angry of a guy. But don't, aren't you in anger management class or something? No, I didn't go. <laughs> didn't go. I didn't fucking need it. <laughs> you only so, got a problem if you show up. <laughs> right. We're, we're, Those are the people. I don't want to give too much away because these guys, this is the very first interview I've ever done where there isn't a VH1 publicist on the other end of the phone. Thank God. Oh, uh, you've done a lot. By the way. You've done a lot of radio. How much do you hate that when all of a sudden you hear the publicist, um, uh, uh, that, that's too far, that's enough, that's no. enough, and they, uh, you know they what, actually... You know, they cut the connection in the middle of the interview because yeah. you asked something a little too crazy? Actually, they say, don't do that to me. I made that real clear. Good. <laughs> I made it real clear. Okay, I know your job. This is my job. You can shake your head at me. Aside from that, that's that. But, Danny, well, the thing is, what is it? Is it getting screwed out of money? Is it the fact that you grow up and all of a sudden you're not getting the parts anymore? There just seems to be that what the fuck happens to you guys? Well, you, you, what do you mean? The, the ex child stars on drugs? Yeah, it's always drugs. You no, know, I don't think it's fair that me, Todd Bridges, and Eddie Munster can bring down an entire industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. All right, you got a point there. Yeah, it's just the three of us. We're the, we're the most pussy gang in the world. Hey, fucking Blossom's doing fine, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> which, one is, which one is the one that's doing the punk rock thing? Uh, oh. That was uh, courtship, courtship of Eddie's father. Courtship of Eddie's father, which is now he's a really nice guy, by the way. So yeah. I, I'm not making fun. I'm just reporting. He's 107 years old with green hair. Yeah. It's a big mistake to think you're a punk rocker. Is this like some kind of weird fraternity, and you guys all keep in touch with each other? 
Yeah, we're best pals. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Urkel's coming over. For yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You and you know, it's weird. Is it true the that Brady's, you? The Brady's actually get together. Yeah. That's so strange. Unless there's partridge barbecues going on that I'm just not invited to. <laughs> we hang out. Hey, you know, uh, Barry Williams used to be a pretty good friend of ours, and then he's going through a divorce. Do you know what that's about at all? No, I don't. I, I, all I, right. It's not like, like I said. I, the last time I saw Greg Brady, I was beating his ass. Dude, you laid waste to him. Oh, that's Holy right. I forgot shit. about that. The celebrity fight. Oh, my God. And and the whole lead up to it was just them showing how Danny just can fucking like rip a tiger apart, and and there's Greg Brady like yeah well I'm gonna go in there and give it a, my shot and they're showing like Danny knows martial arts and he's in fucking shape and now we know he's fucking driving motor oil into his shoulders and, and <laughs> I know <laughs> and, and he just goes in there and kicks his. Ass. I didn't. I didn't mean to beat him so badly because at first, because he's much bigger than I am. Yeah. At, at first, these people kept coming into me, and people that would know, like his trainer, came in and said, "Listen, man, you gotta, you gotta take it easy on this guy. You're gonna look like a bully." Yeah. And I thought, well, this is a professional trainer. He's lying. I'm gonna get. He's, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And somebody else said it, and then somebody else said, "Listen, we really need to get three rounds out of this, if you know what I'm saying." <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, don't don't you worry about it. Carry him a little. Out of it, no problem. So I get out there and I'm dancing around. Well, you know, I make Jake Lamada look like a ballerina. I'm the most crazy <laughs> man. I got one gear and it's forward. <laughs> and so I'm trying to dance around so not to actually fight the guy. And then the audience booed. And once the audience booed, that's it, man. And then I killed him. <laughs> yeah. And then, wait, wait. You know what's funny is I beat him really badly. And I felt bad. And after it was over, I went up to him and I really thanked him because I really wanted to do it. And all my opponents kept backing out. Yeah. They couldn't find an opponent for me. So he agreed to. So I went over and I said, thank you so much for doing this. I really wanted to do it. And I wouldn't have gotten an opportunity unless you agreed and all this really nice stuff. But his back was all covered in blood. And I don't know if it was the ropes or the canvas, which is real rough. But, I mean, he was, you know, uh, the passion of the Christ. <laughs> I mean, he was lashed. You tooled him really bad. You know who else got nailed really bad was that fucking Arnold Horshack. Horshack, yeah. uh, Screech. Well, that was Screech. Just, shouldn't have done that. Oh, I know. It's like they take this old guy and put him in with a young guy. That was... They took, uh, allegedly, an old queen. <laughs> with, uh, with, with a reasonably a young, healthy man. Yeah. <laughs> He just got the shit beat out of him. <laughs> Did he still have his glasses on? <laughs> what about Paula Jones versus, uh, what's her face, the skater? Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, that was another good one. That, that was on the thing. Tanya yeah, Harding? It appeared that Greg Brady had a chance. Yeah. Because yeah. they were wrong. Funny shit, man. So what's going on with your wife? Um, hey, uh, the, first of all, the story is bizarre. You really got married uh, after only knowing her a few hours? Yeah. Here is, I'll give you the quick uh, rundown on this. Met my wife on a blind date. We went out to dinner, and I was drinking heavily, imagine. And I just assumed she was, too. You know, we're having a great big party. We go to my house. I put the moves on her, and she pushes me back and says, you know, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. I'm a Christian, and I'm not I'm not prepared to do that till I'm married. And I said, hey, you might have mentioned that $90 ago. <laughs> uh, and then I thought, not that unreasonable of a request. I opened the yellow pages, and it turns out there's pages of ministers called one of them married 15 years now. Holy shit. You got married just so you could get laid. Now, that's a man. <laughs> He's That's still together. Distance, man. Some guys, uh, you know, that will go a certain level. Like, yeah. I'm going to go 20 pounds overweight tonight. That's a big <laughs> commitment. Not me. I'll get married for it. That's wow. A, I mean, you hear a... stories like that, but you don't you don't hear that they actually stay together, you know? Right. Especially after all the bullshit. I was going to say happy as I've ever been, but that's not true. I'll tell you honestly, this the show, well, I can't say the show because it's my behavior and I've got them to put that. But yeah. the behavior I displayed on this show really drove us apart a little bit. That, that got ugly. It's very friendly now, but it's not what it was. <laughs> I've got to kind of work, work my way back into that. Well, the the weird thing on one of the first shows was how she talked about how she doesn't like having sex. Right. What that's is, a big problem. Yeah, well, that could be a huge yeah. problem. Yeah. Well, not for 
me. And then, and then yeah. you're training like lesbian porn stars in the gym and stuff, and she's really pissed off at you and <laughs> wants you to drop all the female clients that you had. Right. Well, here's my here was my theory on that, which I think is valid. But when you're trying to do a PhD, anything that doesn't sound totally normal, like Ozzy and Harriet, is crazy. Here's my theory on that because I had the affair and it was a big drag. But here's my theory: because Gretchen doesn't like sex, right? Uh -huh. Well, it's like saying Gretchen will not cook yet; she won't let me eat anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. you know, it does make sense. It sure. It makes sense. It makes sense. Because we're best friends, too. If she just let me bone, I'd live with this woman for the rest of my life. <laughs> you're, you're speaking the truth, my friend. Thank you. You're speaking for many, many guys out there. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just speaking out loud for many, many guys. And, and the other observation I had was that um, you got a very, very normal uh, daughter there that's uh, going into the business, huh? You know, as a matter of fact, she recently decided it was boring, so she's done. Oh, she is done, because yeah. part of the show is showing her on auditions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I took her on auditions, she, uh, and she's, you know, she's probably got 40 grand put away. Jeez, we well, saw her in a friends, stroller. And she'll have it paid for. Yep. And like I God said, she's damn. up in her room doing below right now. See? Yeah. <laughs> You know, Danny, we met you uh, at the comedy store. Uh, Anthony brought up a point because I, I brought the show to the, you know, to our attention here, or whatever. And we were talking. I'm like, Dan you know that uh, uh, that uh, baby we saw in the stroller when we saw Danny and his wife back at the comedy store. Oh, that's right. This yeah. Is, I, about I don't even know anymore. Like 10, 12 years so ago. Like, yeah, over oh, my 10 years 10. ago. Oh, 10. So it was a newborn. It yep. was about 10 years ago then. Yeah, you were walking around with a newborn. And we were doing all those uh, lame interviews down at the comedy store. <laughs> like the big, uh, the big star that showed up, I think, was Greg Brady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that all, you know, because I do the exact same thing. You'll sit there in the circle of, and no offense, but in a lot of parts of the country, jocks are the most offensive people in the world. <laughs> yeah. You look you around. Like almost some kind of because people can't see you. It's, a, it's an, uh, an excuse not only to get big, fat, and ugly, but for some reason to have gravy on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started together about ten years ago, Ann and I, we did a lot of those, and we gave up on them, I don't know, six, seven years ago. We couldn't yeah. take it. The, no, the, yeah. the fake radio voices and the fake toughness, and it was just awful. Absolutely. And you had to hang out with these guys in the same room. Danny, we lose you? I think we lost Danny. Yeah, his phone was clicking and clacking the whole oh, time. Good, there he is. Oh, wait, Danny, you back? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm back. Whatever. I was making okay, a dumb cool. point anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, you know, I'd do the same thing you guys would do. My radio station would be there, and I'd be in that big U of disc jockeys they'd bring by the celebrities. Yeah. But there'd never be any celebrities except me. <laughs> so they'd take me from my radio station and walk me around to everybody else's radio station. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Like, you, you would be up interviewing with other radio stations, yet you were there doing the same thing all the radio Radio guys were doing. Uh, Paul uh, Abdul records about to run out. I gotta get back to my table. <laughs> hey, uh, Danny, you made the uh, gossip column in the Daily News today. Maybe it's all over the country. I don't know. Did I you hear? It is. Uh, you've heard. You want to talk about this or what? Uh, you know what? Is it, is it the legal matter? Yeah, with uh, Jamie White. Yeah, no, I can't. She said some weird shit about you. Yeah. She says weird about me is fine. She says some weird stuff about my kid. Oh. Which, I, yeah, I just, it's one of the very few things I don't find amusing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just curious because it's a big story today. Why did you guys, why did you get fired from that job? Because, uh. I swear to God, I don't know. I, because I even went to my boss and I said, listen, man, I'm in trouble. I, I need to go to rehab. I'm, I, I need to know also. Because I've never missed a day of work in my entire life. I've never been sick. I've never been late. I mean, I, I am a together drunk. And, uh. <laughs> So I said, listen, I really feel I need to go to rehab, but I need to know my job will be here when I get back. Mm -hmm. And he said, Danny, not only do we want you back, of course, but you're within your legal rights. The law is on your side. And then I got back from rehab and they fired me. Ah, uh, fucking radio. The, the, That's what I say. Yep. Commercial anyway, radio. If anybody's looking for a jock, I'm available. Well, we're looking to give out some golden tickets for uh, XM Satellite Radio, my friend. Right on. Yeah, we're looking to uh, rescue a few more guys from the awful world of commercial radio. Nastiness of commercials and not being able to say hell anymore. So we'll have to talk you know, off. By the way, you guys, this is the first satellite radio show I've ever done, and I'm on hold. And you said, uh, I don't know, and, this, and you just went, ah, fuck it. Now, oh, my God, that's yeah. so cool. It is so cool, man. And we don't have 18-minute commercial blocks, none of that crap. You just talk until you feel like stopping for a while, and then you go take a leak. Well, that is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs>
Yeah, pretty cool. Well, when's the, when's the show on? Sundays. Uh, it, it seems to be changing. I believe it is 10.30 on Sunday nights. And that's when I'd like you to watch it because that's when the ratings count. But they show it 18 times a week. Yeah. It's called Breaking Bonaduce on VH1, and watch it whenever you like. Yeah, I don't think you got to worry, man. This one's uh, this one's a winner. Jesus Christ, it's it's it's, it's oh, too much. Have seen us on the View. It was awesome. They hated us. <laughs> <laughs> they invited Gretchen and I on the View, yeah. and like Barbara Walters goes on the attack. But in the beginning of, of the show, she's talking about uh, the president wrote a, a note to Condoleezza Rice saying, "I have to go to the bathroom. Is that possible?" Uh huh. And a photographer got a picture of that note, and they were making fun of it. And Barbara Walters says, that's how I got where I am. I never have to pee. I can outweigh anybody, and blah, 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 blah. So I go out on stage, <laughs> and we're talking. She says, being really mean to me. And I go, are you kidding? You're going to judge my show when you just spent four minutes on the fact that Barbara Walters doesn't have to pee? <laughs> And wow. Then, 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 and this, this definitely got cut out. I thought it was cool. Star Jones goes, I am not even willing to talk about this. And I said, try keeping your mouth shut next to a buffet. Bravo. Oh, no. We hate her. We hate her. We hate Star you know Jones. It's, you know what's great? You get Danny on, on interview shows like that, and people will try to get you. They'll try to, like, bring stuff up, but Danny won't deny it. Right. It's not like, no, well, what I meant was this, what, uh, what you saw was this. It's just, no, yeah, that shit happened. Next. You know, so I'll give you the perfect example of that. So, Danny, I read you picked up a transvestite hooker. What really happened? Well, I picked up a hooker and it turned out to be a guy, and I got all pissed off. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's not like I'm not going to tell him. I'm, I'm pretty hard to hurt at this yeah. point in the career. That story got blown out of proportion. I wasn't even near a hooker. It was, no, yeah, hooker. No, reached down, okay. got a handful of knob, and decided to punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> he, had a, he had a wiener, and he wasn't supposed to. He, he demanded, he goes, you owe me 40 bucks because you took me off my corner. I go, buddy, get out of the car. It's just a misunderstanding. And he said, no, you owe me 40 bucks. You took me off my corner. I said, I'm going to give you one more chance to get out of this car. <laughs> so I go over to his side of the door, and I pull him out of the car, and he's big. And then I realized this is a large man in fishnets and pumps. Who's selling his ass? This could be really dangerous. Yeah. So I beat the bejesus out of this guy. <laughs> and then, you'll love this part, because this is singular to me. I've heard every story that you can imagine, that, and this pops it all for me. So I see the cops, and they're coming. And I think, I can explain this. this <laughs> and he lost, right? He lost bad, but he just lost. And then I thought, mm, Danny Pudridge beats transvestite. <laughs> yeah, that's. I, 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 I gotta go. So I jump in my car and I run, and I get to listen to the high-speed chase I'm in on the car stereo of the car I'm driving. <laughs> and that was something. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's great, man. That was a big night out. <laughs> you, you are the real deal, Danny. Well, thank you. <laughs> what do we get to watch you do on TV in uh, future episodes? Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what, to be honest, I swear to God, I, I'm not being coy here. There are huge gaps of what I remember. <laughs> wow. So he's yeah. got to watch the show just to know what he did. I'm not watching the show. No? No. Why? Why is that? Because <laughs> from what I've heard, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> and people are suing me. And are, you, are you trying to say you're embarrassed by uh, how you look on TV? Or, only or? only uh, because... When I'm all lit up and ready, like my own crew, I love this shot. I love this shot, and I know it made it. At one point, my own crew calls the police on me. <laughs> I'm, I, I forget what happens. My wife's at the W Hotel having this party. Somebody says something I don't like. I say to the limousine driver, take me to the W Hotel right now. And the director says no. And I said, hey. The name of the show is Breaking While well, That I'm Being, Bonaduce. That makes it my show. That makes this my limousine. Take me to the W Hotel right now. And the guy goes, no. So I said, really? And I just opened the door and jumped at about 25. So they just pictures of me rolling down the street. And I get up and I stop a car. Like, I'm the police. I just stop this car. And the guy goes, hey, you did Bonaduce. And I said, yeah, will you take me to the W Hotel? And he says, sure, hop in. So I hop in. And I drive off, and they cut to this producer, and he's on the phone to the W Hotel, and he's saying, listen, uh, Dan Bonaduce is on his way down there, and somebody is going to get hurt. You should call the police right now. That's my own crew. 
Holy That's a shit. Good. How, how are you going to do control. it? How are you going to get a second season of this show, by the way? Beat the hell out of me. Yeah, it's a, it's a type of show I don't see how you could possibly do a second season. Well, you know, uh, things have occurred to me. Because we're... we're cause, cause <laughs> you know what it, it is? And here's what I think might be interesting. I'm not... I'm not... You know, because I really do need to work again. These shows don't pay very much. I need to go back to radio soon. Right. But um, I don't live like regular people ever. The fact that I was drunk makes me this wild drunk. The fact that I do a great deal of those things after giving it careful consideration and think, hey, let's play shit, bitch. I think that's <laughs> even more interesting. Thinking it out, knowing the ramifications, and playing anyway, I think is just as interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I, I was so mad at VH1 about one thing. They go to pull the plug. They come up to me and they go, hey, uh, listen, Danny, uh, we're going to pull the plug on the show. And I said, why? And they said, we believe that you're dying. And I said, perfect. Why would you not want to roll on that? The, <laughs> the death of a B-lister? That would be huge. Why would you not want to shoot till I die? And they kind of all looked around like, boy, he's got a good point. But then they put me in rehab anyway. That's the ultimate goal of reality TV. It oh, really is, and it has been. Yep. Um, it's been leading slowly, toward that. Surely. Yeah, that's the end of that genre. It's been leading there the whole time. We almost right. got there with Pedro in uh, Real World San Francisco. Yeah. Watched him die on TV for 12 weeks or whatever it was. Just about, but someone completely self-destructive. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that was nasty. Yeah, we're never going to be on TV, Danny. We uh, we pitched a show to A&E <laughs> <laughs> the other day. It wasn't our it wasn't our idea, and we were wasn't com- your finest moment. It was complete, we no. were completely embarrassed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Anthony Bishop show A and E. A and E, yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> Do we have a great agent or what? <laughs> this is a good show. It, we basically pitched uh, MythBusters meets Jackass. Oh yeah, A and E would love that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. They'll eat that up. They That's looked perfect. at us like we had like uh, you know two heads. The famous. I, I got uh, the weirdest thing happening there. I can't can't believe it. I thought by now, you know, because you know radio, no matter how crazy I got, the, sh- the show's a huge success. I thought my phone would be ringing off the hook with radio offers. No, no, no uh, regular radio, they're, they're a bunch petrified. Of now. Everyone's petrified now. You, right. re- you realize you can't even say fart on regular radio? Is that, is that over now? Yeah. And, and you, you know how, uh, Danny knows the game, you know how you would get away with shit and talk uh, double entendre and right, talk sure. around things? Now they're finding uh, DJs because they know what uh, we were trying to yeah, say. Yeah, it says, well, Whoa. yeah, they say, well, we know what you meant. And everyone knew what you meant, so we're going to find you. Even though you never said wow. that the penis went into the vagina. Yeah. Oh, God, I, I never knew that. I, didn't, I did not know that. Business sucks That's ass. outrageous. Dude, that, yeah. they're helping us out with the satellite radio. Everyone's uh, yep. you're coming aboard in droves at this point. So. Well, can I, good. I, I appreciate to know where a good avenue is. But can I ask you a real live question that maybe you can help me out with? Yeah. Sure. I've got lunch today with a really huge producer guy for TV and yeah. two movies, right? He's got, um, well, he's just a big shot. He's a real big shot. He's not some Hollywood guy that says, I've got a deal. He's a real big shot. He's meeting with me because he's watched the show and he thinks, Danny Bonaducci is one of the scariest people on <laughs> earth. I really want to meet him. I've got some projects. What do I wear? Do I show up looking normal, or do I show up for lunch looking freaky? Look scary. Look scary. If he wants, if if he's saying Danny Bonaduce is one of the scariest people, and I want to capitalize on that, you need like a fucking wife beater shirt. Danny. Yeah. Here's the deal. You, yeah. you, you go to the meeting with a butcher knife, right? <laughs> that occurred to me. Hold on. You got a film crew, right? <laughs> right in front of them, you you, ch- you lop off one of your fingers. <laughs> you got ten. You don't need them all. I'm and they could you. probably sew it right back on. Yeah, and maybe they could sew it back on. You take, like, just take one knuckle out, man, right in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> like in Sharky's <laughs> machine. I'm s- well, the crew, the show is wrapped. Sharky. So I, I won't have a film crew, but if you want a real life indication as to. Uh, God, I don't want to say how crazy I am because it seems normal and right to me. Yeah. Um, there is. I was very sad that I had uh, this affair. I love my wife, and I did not mean to have an affair, right? Yeah. And there, I, I'm a big fan of the Japanese culture. I'm a third degree black belt. I speak Japanese. And the, in the yakuza, which is the Japanese organized crime, 
There is a way, no matter what you have done, that you can apologize once, and it's to cut off the top knuckle of your little finger and present it into a, in a box to the person you've offended. Do it. So I looked at my wife, and I said, who I thought didn't even know about this, and I said, listen, honey, I am going to apologize to you in a way that you have to accept. And she looks at me, rolls her eyes, and she goes, you know, if you cut off your finger, it won't mean anything to me. Everybody knows you can cut off your finger. Try behaving. <laughs> God damn, man. She knows yep. you. Yes, yeah, she does. I right. mean, 30 seconds an hour, I was a bitch, but a lifetime of behaving? Jesus. Danny, we got we to gotta talk radio with you. How, how could Eric Logan get a hold of you? Call me at home. Uh, oh, we got your numbers? All right, good. Cause, I'm uh, assuming you do, yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Because I we're... We do have some spots left, and uh, man, you're very interesting. We've uh, we've been following you for years, and we we bump heads every once in a while with you. So, and you've always been very kind to me, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate this time today. I really, you know, the show's important to me. A very obscure thing. We saw you walking out of a hamburger joint on uh, what was it, Anthony? Sixth uh, Avenue. Remember that horrible horrible burger joint, and we ended up killing them on the air. Oh yeah. Oh. The and you walked out of it. The, a place called the Oyster Bar. There's a couple different oyster bars in New York. Yeah, I know it. I know it. All right, but the one. I think it was like 56 or 55th Street. Yeah, no, no, I only went to the one. I knew exactly yeah. what you were talking about. Yeah, and you were walking out of there as we were walking in. We just kind of said hey to each other. No, no big deal. We didn't really talk. And we ended up going in there and having the worst hamburger ever. <laughs> Thank God I had already left or I'd have gotten blamed. And you me. became part of the story that day because we're like, Jesus, you know, we, he's walking out of the place. It had to be good. <laughs> he's a celebrity. It's got to be good, right? Got some cash left. Yeah. yeah. It was just a, whatever. It's just a, a dumb, obscure thing. But you just walking out. This place must suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Danny. It's always a pleasure. Hey, thanks for the time, you guys. I sincerely appreciate it. Hey, thank you, man. Don't kill yourself, all right? Well, not until the second season. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Bonaduce, thanks, Danny. Bye, guys. All right, there he goes. That rocked. Absolutely. We're getting a lot of people on the instant feedback asking what that uh, lawsuit uh, with Danny Bonaduce is all about. No, we, he couldn't talk about it, but we can. Yeah, we didn't want to push him too hard because you know I, I could see him being a friend of the show easily. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, with this new gig on uh, XM, we're trying to be a little smarter, just a little. Very little. Just trying to be a little smarter because the guy just gave us forty minutes of radio. Why? Why? You know, end our relationship. By, why fuck by with him? He's hard. fun. So um, basically, it was in the Daily News today, and it's all over the country. Breaking news on his VH1 reality show, Breaking Bonaduce, former Partridge Family child star De uh, Danny Bonaduce, is portrayed as an alcoholic, substance abuser, and steroid user. Not to mention a cheating husband who's so fed up with his midlife crisis that he's actually that he actually slits his wrists. But apparently it's still possible to damage his reputation. The 46-year-old Bonaduce, who was fired in July from his drive-time DJ job at the Clear Channel LA radio station Star 98.7, is suing former co-host Jamie White. Oh. <laughs> ah. Jamie White. Oh, boy. A hole. Another hole. Is it a hole? Uh, suing former co-host Jamie White for allegedly claiming on the air that Bonaduce arrived at work loaded and higher than a kite, that he was arrested for drunken driving, and that he once screamed at his 10-year-old daughter, you effing whore. All lies, Bonaduce says. No comment from White or Clear Channel, which is in arbitration with Bonaduce over the unpaid portion of his contract. Wow. So that uh, story is developing. Don't you hate the hole? That's why we don't have holes here. No holes. Did you see Bill Burr filing suit against Opie for bad mouthing <laughs> his shirt? <laughs> no, I say no. Uh, wait, wait, wait! No, come on. Oh, oh, you! Shut up, hole. <laughs> it isn't fair. Oh, guys. You know you're right. Yeah. Y yes. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Uh-huh. That's all they add. Of course. No, no. It's not funny. Yeah, it's very funny. Guys, I can't take this. I I got to say, you got to stop. <laughs> Everyone else is buying into the Danny Bonaduce show. The guy is obviously very, very smart. We had yeah. him on the show. We love the guy. Absolutely love the guy, but he's so plain up. When he's in that man. shrink's office... And his like steroided out biceps, just you see the veins pumping, and and he's he's kind of leaning over, yelling at the psych uh, the psychiatrist, and his wife is almost looking like she's holding him back. 
and the shrink is just sulking back in his chair, slinking back, and it's kind of scary. Do you think that's, like, put on? Because he looked like he was going to hit him. He says, you know, my wife is fine. Outside we're out, this office. And then we come in here, and you start talking, and she fucking hates me. And he looked like he wanted to lean over and kill the guy. Uh, anyone else get the impression that the shrink needs a shrink? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a little shrink, off. He's got he his is own a little problem. off. He's got his own off. Every time your shrink problems. has, like, plastic surgery, I mean, like, how well yeah. adjusted is he? Yeah. He's got a facelift and Botox. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, you want to tell me some of your fucking issues before Maybe I delve into my childhood? Maybe your self-image problems yeah. are a little, yeah. uh, little off. His hair is highlighted. I don't, I don't believe in that shrink crap. Have you ever been to a shrink? Yeah. You have? Do you believe in it? The work or anything? No, you know what it does? It, it becomes more of a tort. Like, for, for before you go there, you're in, like, this ignorant bliss. Mm -hmm. Some some broad I was dating was like, you know what? You really fucked up. You need to go talk to somebody. And I knew on some level she was right. So I go down and talk to him. And all you do is just figure out your patterns. Oh, yeah. I not, And then you just become completely aware of the fucked up shit you're doing as you continue to do it. Really? Oh, yeah. This is, this is why I'm doing this. And it's like you're a robot and you can't stop doing it. So, But why is he the expert? Why hmm. is he the expert? Some guy you just pay... What, whatever, for for an hour every once in a while. Like, all of a sudden, he's an expert on your life because he sees you. I, yeah. I don't get it. I, That's I, the same I, feeling you have when you take an acting class. And the person teaching the class, it's like, okay, you're not making $20 million a movie. Yeah, so why am I listening yeah. to you? Yeah, and you're going to tell me how to book an audition? Right. I think it's more, also, it's just about talking to an outside party. It's one of those things you can't sit there with any of your friends and talk about everything that's like bothering you. So it gives you this outside party that you can talk to, and hopefully through this talking, uh, it gets all the shit out of you. I get bored with um, my friends and family just always agreeing with me. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, that check didn't come uh, the other week. Uh, you gonna send that out? Yeah, you really want to hear my shit, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I went to a. Uh, a psychologist wasn't even like a psychiatrist, like some counselor guy. Back when I was, I guess I was about 22, and I started getting like anxiety. All of a sudden, I'd be like just freaking out uh, with with anxiety, just feeling anxious, not knowing where it's coming from. So I wanted to, you know, figure it out. And there was no internet to just look it up. Right. So I go to this guy, and he's like, "Well, you just need to learn these relaxation techniques. Here, lay down, and we'll put this like." Uh, sensors on your jawline and then to hook it up to this which amounted to a video game uh, you had to keep the balloon this balloon in a certain area through relaxing your muscles and then I was sitting there going alright that kind of sounds cool you know if you could learn these relaxation techniques but I noticed if you clinched your jaw the balloon went up if you relaxed your jaw it went down so I'm winging this thing through an obstacle course, just using tricks. Yeah. You know, not re not being relaxed. I'm using my jawbone as a controller for a game. And he's like, "Oh, that's good. That's good." And I'm like, "No, it's not. This guy doesn't know shit." Oh, it's, it's terrible. Getting no answers. I didn't even want it. I just wanted yeah. to know what it was. I didn't even want to know how do you fix it, how do you do that. Just what the fuck is this? The person I went to, they just kept asking me questions. Just, and then I really? just let me talk, and then I never really learned anything. Any, anything I did, well, why would you worry? This old Jewish lady. That's oh, great. Me. Really? Well, why would you blah, blah, blah? And then I'm fucking talking. Okay, we're out of time. That's what the problem is. That's what I have <clears throat> a problem with. All of a sudden, they're, you're out of time because someone else is waiting in the waiting room for their stupid hour. Well, I really think... All right, I'm going to tell you now the real problem... Okay, next time you come in. Well, <laughs> but I was at a breakthrough. Right. Uh, let's say hi to Brian. Brian, what's up? Hey, uh, you know, I think I think what those guys do. Number one, they're they're they got a degree in the whole psychology psychiatry thing, so that's why they're why they can tell you uh, what's wrong with you. But um, you know, like uh, I think that everybody, people in general, have kind of patterns they live by. So. You know, even though everybody's a little bit different, when they kind of listen to what your story is, they kind of can tell based on the patterns of other people what's wrong with you. Yeah, I guess that's what Bill was uh, getting at there. All right. All right. I personally don't get it, but if it's helping people out there, great. Have fun. Yeah. There you go. See Thanks, you. Brian. We got Danny Bonaducci audio. Did you Did you watch the show mm -hmm. where he cut his wrist? No, saw clips. I saw a clip show. See? I watched that uh, that soup on uh, 
Friday, and they replay it on Sunday. Talk Soup has made a huge comeback. It's just called The Soup now. Yeah, yeah. And the host is, uh, God, I, I doing the guy a grave disservice by not remembering his name. Haley, I think his last name is, or McHale. Or I don't know. He does, <laughs> he does a good job. He does a really good job. Very funny, sarcastic. And uh, it's it went from being Talk Soup, which was just talk show clips back in the olden days when all they had were those a bunch of talk shows on TV, to now they, it's, they just take on all subjects, reality shows, uh, the news shows, uh, and talk shows. Right. And it's really good. They get all the funniest clips and just goof on them. Speaking of funny clips, uh, we brought it to everyone's attention on Friday. Remember the reporter on the Today Show in the canoe? Joel McHale. There you go. What? I got it, Dan, before you even showed me the paper. What was that? That's the host, Joel McHale. Oh, okay, okay. The the uh, Danny Bonaducci clips? Yeah. Of him cutting his wrist? What do you think yeah. about that whole uh, cutting the wrist thing? Uh, well, I heard you talking about it. Um, on I the way out Friday, on Friday? On the way out. I don't, I don't believe it's an actual suicide attempt. You think attempt. it's the cry for help? Yeah, it's definitely just it's a cry, cry for, for help. cry for ratings. Unless. <laughs> unless I, I can't stand addicts. I used to live with one. They're just fucking the most selfish... Yeah, minded fucking pussies on the planet. That's I'm, how I'm, I see I'm, it. I'm sick of them. That is how I see and it. They always surround themselves with people who want to help, and they just mm -hmm. do the most fucked up shit. And then they, and then, and then you just call themselves out on it first. No, I'm a loser. I'm an asshole. And then they surround themselves with people going like, No, people no. love you. Don't kill yourself. Good. Well, the, yeah, and then they get all the attention they were looking yeah. for, you know? That's what I think they the whole... need tough love. Kill yourself. Jump out the window. This is disease, big... man. Um, you know, uh, we're getting into an area that, I don't know, the whole alcohol is a disease thing. I have yeah. a tough time believing. I'm it's sorry. It's called willpower. They have the Danny... Yeah. Uh, stop. Danny Bonaducci, you know, was explaining, I think, to his kids or his wife or whatever in this uh, latest episode saying that, you know, daddy's got to go to rehab because alcohol is a disease. And I'm like... You're, I don't know. Think if someone with cancer could stop drinking from the bottle of cancer, right? That's, that's and it would be cured. That's the uh, obvious uh, thing I was going to say. Yeah, how it, fast would you throw away the bottle exactly. of AIDS if you knew this is what was, <laughs> this is yeah, you know? this is what was causing ah, one more shot. I can't get off the stuff. You have a cancer. Can't get off the AIDS. The AIDS. You have a cancer-ridden body, but someone's saying just just put down the cancer bottle and yeah, you'll be fine and you're cured. But you no. can't do that with a real disease. So no. I, I don't know. I don't know why they're taking this angle that it's a disease. And the overeaters and the the bulimia. I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's something else going on with your mind psychologically and stuff that is causing you this. But to actually call it a disease, I think, is an insult to people that have real diseases that they they cannot stop it. So there's some not, kind of mental it's, thing. It's called being a pussy. You're just lumping it under I'm, your I'm, a I'm pussy. I'm going John Wayne on this yeah. one. Yeah. Here's Danny Bonaducci talking about it as a disease. So, just so you know, because I've always been uh, square with you about this in the past, that um, nothing new and or terrible has occurred. Uh, you can just, you know, feel when it's coming back. And, you know, you can drink like a gentleman for so long till something yeah. bad happens. And I decided not to wait. What do you think? I guess so. Well, I think I go with you. Because I just can't. I've got to do something for grown ups. Not little boys. I don't know. Okay. Are we okay? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about this. It's not your fault. See I'm that? It is, my dear. Thank you, Danny, for saying I'm, right. I'm afraid it is. Afraid it is. Yeah, because you're, you're not held accountable. You got to be held accountable for the shit you do in your life. No. Because if you fail, no. at, cause if you fail at <laughs> rehab and you can't, you know, you can't cure this disease, you can at least tell people around you, the people that love you, that you're disappointing. I try, but it's a disease. I I did my best, but the disease got to me. You and know? then people, when are people automatically start... surround them. Go, well, we're here for you, and blah blah. Yes. The master manipulators. When are, when are people going to be accountable for what they do in their lives? I don't get it. Who wouldn't want to walk around hammered all day? I would love to. It'd be fucking great. Wouldn't that be great? Just every drunk day, off just your ass boozing it day. up, and people just sweeping up after you. No hangover because you just keep getting drunk. Sure, why not? I love. This. Yeah, any problem you cause, the, your loved ones are there. We're there for you.
because you have a disease uh, cleaning up your messes. Hey, uh, Danny Bonaducci cutting his wrists. So this is the other thing I want. I, I, I don't think, you know, cutting of the wrist is actually uh, a suicide attempt. Wow. Which way, I know, which way I know, did he go, vertical or horizontal? Well, if you go, uh, wait, vertical would be up, th that's, that's up when the you're, arm? Yeah, you're really trying to kill yourself. Yeah, up the arm, I would say you're trying to kill yourself. Oh, yeah. Oof. Anything you do and then you just sit there and think about it, I don't know. Like they say pills are really a cry for help. Because a lot of people that take pills usually wind up calling somebody and saying, I took a bunch of pills, and then you know, you're off to the hospital. And you know you have stomach, enough. They're fine. And there is that time. Enough time. It takes a while. Unless enough you're, time. Depending on what pills you're taking and how many you're taking, uh, but most of the time it's... Plus, wasn't there a camera crew of sitting time. there as he's, he's cutting his wrist? I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it went <laughs> down, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's fucking, up, he's fucking up this reality TV for everybody because now it's like, you know... Extreme. It, it's extreme. It's extreme stuff. And uh, anyone else pitching a show, they're going to be like, yeah, whatever. Did you yeah. see what Danny was doing for, you know, eight weeks on uh, on VH1? Mm -hmm. Here's him cutting his wrist or uh, explaining it, which is pretty cool, I think. She comes home at 3 in the morning and tells me she wants a divorce because I've gotten so mad about the strippers. Wow. So I say I can't live without you. I just said, well, you have to. So I cut my wrist. Oh, here comes the crazy and word. I'm and it doesn't work out well, so I cut it again. It's just not bleeding enough. And I say, you see... Jesus. It's not bleeding enough. I, I wish VH1 had the balls to play the Benny Hill music right there. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of... Put it in fast motion. VH1, I don't think this is dramatic enough. Go get the dramatic music. And I'm bleeding. And it doesn't work out well, so I cut it again. It's just not bleeding enough. And I say, you see, oh, here, here's the little one. So I say, I would die without you, so don't divorce me, I'll die. And she says, I'm divorcing you. So this one I cut a little more serious. Well, I nick a little something. You can see this bump right here? You're a doctor, you probably know. It starts shooting blood for a little, you know, it's not that bad. It's certainly worse than that one. But it's bleeding an unreasonable amount. So she flips out and is going to call, I'm assuming, an ambulance and dials 911. Well, 911's the cops. 911's not an ambulance. So I take the phone, and I hang it up, and I smash it on the ground. Well, the cops show up anyway, and I'm shooting blood. They put me in handcuffs, and they take me to the psych ward. So anyway, uh, so that was kind of fun. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other parts. This is so ridiculous. Why don't you straighten up and stop, like... He's being great. an asshole, and then you just, so, like, fucking... He's great, because he's he's doing exactly what uh, these reality shows are looking for, just a, a, just a train wreck, you yeah. know? And then you got the therapist there. He doesn't... He's never had this situation in, in his stupid L.A. office before, you know? And he doesn't That therapist know probably has a headshot. Have you seen his face? Yeah, the way no, it's all exactly. Pulled back? He's, yeah. he's like a TV therapist, basically. And he's just sitting there, you know... I guarantee that therapist has more problems than Danny Bonaducci. Guarantee it. I got the two clips for, of uh, Danny and his wife in the therapist's office. Uh-huh. Where you were saying, like... Oh, yeah. He looked like he wanted to kill the shrink. This is great. Listen to this clip. This is where Danny demands that Gretchen tell the doctor she loves him. Yeah, this will help in a relationship when you're having problems. Yeah. Are you in love with me? Please look at the doctor and say, I am in love with my husband. I know it from the bottom of my heart. I'm in love with my husband. I think I'm at a place where I can begin to feel that again. Wait, wait. So Danny, you're not... Please gonna, stop but this. you told me this way. This is going to get bad now. How are Gretchen? Yeah. I'm in love with you. And that's all. There's no but. There's no couch. There's no if she'd sleep with me. It's painful that you won't sleep with me. So what? I'm in love with you. Never sleep with me again. I'm in love with you. I hate it that you have a staff of thousands, yet tell me you have no time for me. Keep them and have no time for me. I'm in love with you. You treat me terribly, and I'll stay in love with you. I can't help it. It's like breathing. You're everything to me. Could you look at the doctor and say, I'm sure I'm in love with my husband? Can you yes or no? Are you in love with me? I am sure that I am at a spot where I can, because now that everything has come apart. Uh, you promised me. You said you would tell the doctor I am in love with my husband. Danny. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
Because he's so trying to get you to care with that music in the background. Yeah. I don't. I'm just saying, he he's treated you like shit. He fucked around on you. No, I don't love you. Right. Right. You've treated me terribly. He's out there just fucking, fucking strippers and fighting shit. with trannies <laughs> and then saying it's a sex addiction. Steroids. I have a disease. Right. Yeah. Here's Danny. I like to fuck whores. Here's Danny flipping out on the doctor. This is the clip you were talking about. Yeah. It didn't work out for me the way I hoped. I hoped it would work out better than this. Let's see you, Doc. You know what, though? The whole uh, deconstructing the house, good job. You're f***ing with my house now. I'm digging you less every second. Digging you less. Cool world. Damn it, Gary. God damn it, Gary. Danny. Danny. This has to happen for us to start over. Okay? It has to. It's not healthy, what's been going on. For both no, of us. it's not. And that's right. when you try and take away your love again. I Are you okay. doing something to my wife that is making her behave differently than she does outside your door? Okay. Is there some f***ing voodoo that you do that makes a woman outside that door be desperately in love with me and not right there? I, I wish I could take the phone. Is there something you're f***ing doing? What the f*** is happening around here? Please stop, okay? Yeah, you know what it is? Like she has protection in the office, right? You know, because they're at a, they're at their home by themselves. Yes, Danny, I you love, love you. me. Yes, yes. As uh, if she started going, I'm at a place right now. Boom! Right in the face. Right. Yeah, of course. Uh, when they're at home alone, she's going to be saying, "Yeah, that. she's scared Not shitless." Stupid. The guy's got scars and bandages on his wrist, and he's asking her, "Do you still love me?" Of course, she's going to say yes. Steroid needle in his shoulder blade. But in the office, she feels a little bit uh, protected. You know. How easy is it to write scary music too with a with a Casio? You just need two notes. Yeah, and you just keep going back. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, just really slowly. All right. Wee, wee. 